Hello and welcome. I'm Pastor Sean Nider, Zion Lutheran Church here in Grand Coulee, Washington, and Bethel Lutheran Church, a little ways down the road, Coulee City. And um, this is the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, or as uh, in, the th in the liturgical calendar, proper eight, a uh, picture from our gospel lesson, Jesus, I came to bring uh, not peace, but a sword. And um, we'll be following uh, Romans for our sermon theme. Uh, the law, again, Romans chapter 7, 1 through 13. As uh, you might say, again, how much do we have to think about the law? Uh, we're a gospel church, but uh, the law again. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 28, 5 through 9, and Matthew 10, verses 34 through 42. Uh, the continuation of Jesus st still giving instructions about to send them out, the disciples, to practice preaching and teaching. We'll be learning a new song, The Holy Ten Commands. It's actually an old song, a Martin Luther song, but, uh, but the tune is, is, well, medieval. So I, uh, I, re I adjusted it slightly to fit with Twinkle Twinkle, and I made a video about that, so watch the video to learn the Ten Commandments song. Uh, these are the Holy Ten Commands. And um, it will sing, Let us ever walk with Jesus, and then before you, Lord, we bow, uh, since this is our 4th of July, uh, Independence Day, uh, a, a hymn of national, um, our, our nationalism, you know, uh, but to the Lord first, and, the, uh, and then our country. So... In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray the collect for this week. Almighty God, by the working of your Holy Spirit, grant that we may gladly hear your word proclaimed among us and follow its directing through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, uh, and again today, uh, you might want to open up your Bibles or follow along on your bulletin sheet. If you have this, Romans chapter 7, and um, Paul is again, or still, talking about the law. Why is that, you ask? Is he a lawyer? Well, in a sense, he was a Pharisee. He studied the Old Testament law very carefully uh, and tried to live it uh, completely. Because um, who else would want to talk this much about the law? <laughs> At least that's what most of us say, right? Uh, who else would want to talk this much about the law except lawyers? Well, in our sinful area, era, good laws and rule of law is important for a peaceful, civilized society. And we have been blessed, or maybe even spoiled, by one of the most peaceful societies in the history of the world. Not perfect, but compared to the rest of history around the world, the United States and Canada over the past 200, 300 years has been one of the most peaceful times of all history. Even uh, the major wars of our time have been fought in other places, especially Europe, you know, uh, in Africa and Asia. Um, and so we thank God for the blessing of living in this time and this place. If things uh, do fall into anarchy and chaos, uh, you will certainly miss the law and order that we have been blessed uh, with over these past several decades. But those uh, are more political discussions. Uh, Paul is discussing the law from a theological perspective, so let's dig deeper to understand what he's talking about. And so Paul didn't put chapters or verses here in, in his books, in his letters. Uh, his letters are just on and on, uh, words and words and words. Um, the numbers chapters and verses have been added later, but he begins this section by addressing the Romans again, and we can say by extension us, as we're still reading his letter, uh, brothers. 
And uh, just as a kind of a side note from the legalism, uh, you know, not just men, Paul is addressing men and women too, in the way that many languages use the plural male form of the word, especially brothers, uh, to address a mixed crowd. Uh, you know, when you, in Spanish, when you ask somebody how many brothers they have, not just brothers, but brothers and sisters, siblings, uh, as we would say in English, but, uh, but, um, we, but the, the plural male form uh, addressing a mixed crowd, but also because we as Christians are all heirs to the kingdom of God. You know, a big change in Paul's time. Uh, now, in our time, you know, sisters also, or daughters also usually often receive some share of the inheritance, or maybe even the, the main share. But uh, in Paul's time, in biblical times, they, um, the firstborn son in particular, but other sons received inheritance. Daughters did not, uh, but, uh, but in Christ we are all together, brothers and sisters, all heirs to the promise, the kingdom. So uh, the more important thing here is that he is addressing Christians, as I stated last week, all children of God, uh, both the Jews who knew the Old Testament laws particularly, and um, the Gentiles who have now learned the scriptures and understood the law theologically, and maybe they also had some idea, discussion from the laws from a Roman political perspective also. So the law, Paul says, is binding on a person only as long as he lives. And he uses a great example of that, one that most everybody lives through or experiences in some way, maybe not, even if not in their own life, you know, through their parents, that uh, marriage, uh, is, it, as we in our wedding vows still say today, until death do us part. At least that's the traditional wedding vows. Some people write different things these days, uh, oftentimes disrespecting marriage and the promise of eternal, of life together. You know, this life together, but uh, as Jesus himself talks about, addresses this very issue when they try to trick him up in a marriage that is only for this time. Um, in not, uh, in we will not be married in the resurrection. You know, married people can be best friends forever, <laughs> uh, but still each independent, not illegally, not bound to each other in any way. And not bearing any more children. Uh, so God, uh, and this is true for many other laws and crimes also. You can only punish a person in this life. God is the judge of the next. Uh, a person lives once and then the judgment. So you can't put a dead body on trial. It wouldn't accomplish anything. So, but uh, Paul, uh, by going on, Paul taught in Romans 5 and 6, that in baptism our sinful natures are put to death and raised again, born again, just as Jesus is risen. Not so that we can do whatever our sinful passions want to do, but so that we can bear fruit to God. Not to live in sin or to be a slave to the passions of our flesh. Even as Christians, we struggle against those sins and temptations. But the Holy Spirit given to us in our baptism helps us you know, so that while we are still tempted and while we still have moments of weakness and fall into sins and temptations, we are not slaves to the law and sin. Now these may sound like opposites, slaves to law and sin. You know, law is good and or behaving good or <laughs> sin is bad, right? But Paul puts them together and the devil essentially tempts people in either one way or the other to draw them away from God. Either that the person is already good and they don't need forgiveness, they don't need a savior, um, or that they are such horrible people that they, God, the creator of the universe, couldn't possibly love or care about them. And you know people on both sides. Those who say, well, I'm already a good person, I don't need to go to church. Uh, um, I'm better than those hypocritical Christians anyway. 
Uh, they think that church is just to teach people how to be good, to behave, to follow the law. Or people on the other side who are afraid to come into a church because the roof might fall down on me, the roof, it might collapse, right? Um, uh, or that they will be judged by the rest of the people here. And, well, unfortunately, sometimes that happens, you know, but don't do it. Uh, both are held captive to the law, thinking that they are already good or that they have to try to be good enough, uh, uh, that they're not free to live a life of pure love for God and for others. So Paul then, you know, goes on, is the law sin? Is the law itself bad? Is that the problem? You know, it just leads us you know, one way or the other to either try to be good people or to think that we are so bad, you know, that God can't, can't love us. Um, well, we teach the grace of God is a free gift of salvation that we cannot earn or even choose by any human power. And we live without fear of sinning. Now, in some churches, have accused Lutherans, particularly at the Reformation time, the Catholic Church, that the Lutherans were antinomia. There's a big theological word for you. It means against the law, or you might say lawless, because we weren't afraid of sinning. Uh, some, uh, and some churches today truly become this, in a sense, you know, as I talked about last week, of gospel reductionism, that they don't try to teach people anymore how God wants them to behave, or more clearly we should say, how God, the commandments teach us how to love God and others, our neighbors. And yet, uh, in these churches, you will find that while they turn away from God's commandments, they end up making up their own commandments. That if you aren't loving in this way, accepting of all other sins, uh, then you're a hater, or you're, so you're you that are the sinner. Uh, because in reality, not many people actually want to live in lawlessness, you know, or, uh, or in anarchy. They can see that that is dangerous. They just don't want to follow God's commands, or, or accept that God's instructions are actually loving towards him and to our neighbors. So Paul then you know, talks a little bit about reverse psychology. I think this is, a, you've all experienced this in a sense, either, either when you've tried to tell somebody either not to do something or to do something, and they do the opposite, uh, particularly you know, teenage children, uh, or when somebody has tried to tell you to do something, and you, you just can't help that rebellious nature that says, oh really, I know that's the right thing to do. I know what I should do, but I'm just going to prove to you that you can't tell me what to do, right? Uh, just to show that, uh, <laughs> um, just to show that I'm independent, especially on Independence Day. And you laugh. It sounds silly, but we've all done it. That's, as Paul says, the sinful nature. The sinful nature is the problem, not the law, not God's law, and you know, that's our, that's our rebellious temptations. It just shows how sinful we are. The law shows our sin, even if we think that we're good people. And that's, that's our fault, not the commandments, not God's fault for giving us commandments. So, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, as, we, as we're studying these commandments, and may God... Give you, fill you with His Holy Spirit to resist the temptations to sin uh, and to give you the discipline to live the commandments and not to try to earn God's love or salvation, but because God does love you and has saved you, has forgiven you. Uh, so love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul and love your neighbor as yourselves. Uh, you are loved. You are born again. You have been set free to live as God's people, in true love and peace and joy. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us confess our faith 
in the triune God and, uh, and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.